will start in few minutes please hang in there
Yeah, so today we'll start. Uh, so this day is the final week of our live session. So we'll start discussing about all the things that we have learned in this uh, tutorial, uh, in this tutorial sessions and in this uh, course. And we'll I'll briefly discuss all of the topics uh, one by one. So I think no one is here, but I'll um, anyway discuss all these things. And uh, if you have any doubts or if you have any questions, you can definitely uh, post it in the chat or like, you know, open up a mic and start talking. So this is the final week and it starts now. Now let me open my let me open my notebooks. Uh, Give me a second. I'll share my screen. Share my screen. Share. And yeah. So let me go to the page. Session. We open the sun portal as well. Put it written. Give me a second.
So uh, this is summary session of uh, summarizing all the um, things that we have learned in this uh, in this um, coursework. And uh, if you have any particular doubt, you can unmute and ask. But uh, yeah, so it will it will go like like I'll start describing the things uh, what happened from start. So in week one, we saw. Three different things. First thing is it how the image is formed actually. So to uh, so we we looked at image formation. So image formation like start, sort of started like how uh, there was used, used to be a point hole camera and uh, and how like um, mm, pinhole cameras and how. Of the reflection of this panel camera were taken in another screen and we are able to uh, you know, uh, get the image uh, from the image so it's not very like uh, uh, it's not very um, uh, very much used in, t uh, in today's day scenario but <clears throat> then we uh, move towards like uh, image representation so now we have an image how to represent this image so to represent, um, there were many ways like uh, frequency method and uh, den uh, density methods, but uh, the most popular way was just just representing it by uh, RGB. So, we took the image, we we represent each and every pixel of the image as a combination of some red value, some blue value, and some green value, and these values varies between red with this red green and blue varies between 0 to 255 okay so we got this um, image representation uh, with uh, uh, rgb value and this is the uh, thing we need to remember coming forward because this is the representation we use usually in today's day scenario and um, uh, we generally scale this and normalize this to make the value lies between 0 to 1. Then we learned about uh, uh, linear filters. So linear filter, what it said is that uh, this is weak one. Right? Okay, so is it linear filter? Uh, so in linear filter, what they what happened is that uh, you take a image, you take an image. Um, true image like x and you apply certain filters such as f1 f2 to this image and as a result you get a resultant image x dash and here i would say let's say x double dash and this image will be showing us some characteristics of the original image. So maybe some filter will reveal some edge. Maybe some filter will reveal some something such as uh, curves. It is. So, so this was the idea of filters, like how to uh, design different filters which can be used and leveraged to process these images. Um, um, one by one and uh, get some meaningful uh, results out of it. So with this, we concluded week one. So uh, in the week week two, we looked at um, different things such as like edge detection from edges to blobs and corners and image pyramids and filter banks and shift and, uh, shift and va variants. So 
all these things are and other feature spaces. So all these things are like, you know, it's just an extension of this linear filter. So we had this filter. We use this filter to create, like, we use this idea of creating filter to create more complex, uh, complicated and sophisticated filters. And we use, use this filter to detect edges. We use, we use this uh, filter to uh, detect the blobs and the corners. And um, we use this filter. So there are some uh, other algorithm which uh, sort of, um, which are used to uh, cre uh, analyze image in a very depth uh, manner and uh, process them, pre-process them and um, get uh, inference out of it. So, 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 uh, so, uh, so CIPT is a very popular uh, algorithm in that regard where uh, um, so CIPT was used to, uh, I say that, yeah, so CIPT was used to uh, this uh, um, detect this extremas and all. So you, you can go in detail of this, of, of these things and you can like reveal interesting things. Actually, we discuss all these things in our uh, live classes. Um, so hog was also uh, another thing that, that is histograms of uh, uh, gradients and uh, sift was another version of that uh, uh, another extension of that and uh, um, so those are like very popular algorithm uh, for that but the, the question came the problem came when we uh, uh, yeah so when we tried to uh, uh, try to learn uh, very complex things from the image. Uh, let's say like there is an image and with, there is uh, edges and corners. Along with edges and corners, uh, there, there is uh, say like, you know, some complex feature, some complex non-linear feature we want to learn, some complex non-linear pattern we want to learn and see and sort of try to uh, get a feel of it. Uh, but by handcrafting, so we all these filters were handcrafted so just uh, handcrafting this feature was not very easy okay because um, you can handcraft uh, features that we can use to uh, parse this image and get the edge of it uh, or let's say get to get the um, curve or blob out of it but uh, uh, getting complex feature and designing filters for the complex feature was not very straightforward so what people did is that uh, what people did is that they, they start, started looking into neural networks. So what neural networks do is that neural networks work in this way is that like the, here is the input and here is the output. So find me a relationship between this input and output. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's say you have thousands of data of cats and dogs with uh, labels uh, naming them as cats and dogs. So what you can do is that you can just pass, uh, we can just ask this machine learning model that you just take this uh, thousands of bits of cats, cats and dogs with the level. Like I'll just feed you like this is a cat, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a dog. So what you have to do is that you have to learn all these filters by yourself and give me the final optimal filter, which sort of, um, which sort of like extract meaningful <laughs> features out of it. So how do you how do you sort of uh, quantify the meaningful features the way to quantify the meaningful features is that uh, the downstream task is uh, getting achieved so downstream task one of the downstream tasks is classification so if you are finding filters which facilitate us to learn a better classification model then that is a that is a meaningful feature and with that fil fil filter uh, we will get some interesting uh, uh, patterns out of it. So, so that's what we did. So instead of handcrafting uh, feature maps or uh, that is called feature maps or the filters or the kernels, all these three, three uh, uh, all these three terms are like used interchangeably. So instead of handcrafting them, what we are doing now is that we are sort of learning it. We are giving lots of lots and lots of examples, and we are sort of learning a relationship between input and output okay great so we did that so uh, so to so, so to learn it 
through neural network so we had to know the basics of neural network and that's why the that's why the week four was all about uh, how this neural network works and how they are like um, um, how the weights in this neural network network is uh, predicted sorry uh, weights in this neural network is learned and how we sort of can improve the training and how we can improve the accuracy and everything. So, give me a second. So, a typical way to learn neural network, uh, learn uh, something in the neural network is, uh, so I'll just show you like how this thing works. Um, um, and then. so a neural network is like you know just uh, the, a, a, it's called an artificial neural network it's just a uh, input layer some hidden layer and some output layer okay so but the image is like this how can we pass this to this right so there's a question how can we pass this to this so that we'll learn better words so first what they did is that they just expanded it so here is the image they took you took the first row you put it here you take the second row you put it here you, you take this third row you put it here and so on so you'll get a very long vector so if the image is of 30 cross 30 you'll get, you'll get a vector of 900 dimensional okay and you have to pass all this 900 dimensional vector as an input to this input layer okay and this will propagate forward to the output layer so the problem happened with this method is that this this was not like um this is this was not uh, uh, very uh, I would say um, successful because so all these things like ANN was there from 1990s but uh, the success of computer vision in um, um, this uh, uh, the success of computer vision in um, neural network world boomed when they created CNN. So CNN was created in 1998 as well, but the full scale CNN giving it all the training powers. So what happened, the problem that happened with this network is that they have the, uh, so image have a spatial correlation. What is spatial correlation? Like if here is the image of a cat, that so its eye and its ear has a spat spatial correlation its eye should be right to this ear and this eye should be left to this ear and its uh, sort of first should be like you know in this direction or something so the the relative position of different things in in an object or in a yeah in an object on in the image matters right when when we stretch it when we stretch it to make a full image the relation this relationship is like you know now um getting killed okay so here will be somewhere i here will be somewhere like neck so it's it's mess so to so to accommodate this so to uh, like um uh, can uh, to uh solve this problem so what this uh, started to do is that they will start uh, so they start to build CNN. So what CNN said is that CNN said is that okay, you have an image, so we will do some convolution operation. So convolution is a standard operation, then some pooling, then some ReLU operation. So these are the, the combined operation, con pool and ReLU. So we will apply convolution and pool, then we will, we will apply um, a ReLU activation function to this to make it smaller 
okay so once you make it once you get to the end the image will be very small okay so once the image is very small you can actually and it will have a dimension now Depends on now. So now, since it is very small, the spatial correlation between two things is like much smaller and it's not very strong. So I can now stretch it to make a long vector and pass it, pass this vector to another layer or the output layer. This was the idea behind CNNs. And in this way, I'll learn different filters so all these filters will be there and these filters will not be handcrafted it will be learned and when while running while um, learning this filter it will give us um, all those it will give, the next image will have all those pattern which is essential for classification okay so that that was the idea behind cnn and so there was a neural network and in the week five we saw a convolutional neural network and how this back propagation works in CNN and uh, how this evolution started in the uh, CNN uh, CNN um, a domain where like so from 2012 it started from AlexNet then it came to like so there are some other things as well here in 2015 came ResNet. ResNet was a good till 2021 came Vision Transformers. Vision Transformer was built on this paper. Attention is all you need. And attention is all you need was published by V Vaswani and uh, Google Print. Asis Vaswani. Vaswani. Oh, I think we don't need it. So, so, so this is the like the current state of the art um, model for image classification, and uh, yeah, there's the evolution of deep learning through this time. So, yeah, so week six was uh, okay, week five was that week six was explaining um these uh, predictions so so we have now um cnns we have now cnns and the cnn can now like explain things so so you have you had image then you learned some filters out of it and this filter will give you another image so and so on so you look at this filter you do some processing here and you get some um, resultant output here and you look at this filter you try to evaluate you try to explain what your what your model is trying to predict what your so there are things such as what your model is trying to look at before sort of making a decision or 
what your model is trying to like. It's just an explanation for uh, so the neural network models, the black box models. So this is giving this sort of giving an explanation for. Yeah, this sort of giving an explanation for uh, why these things is happening. Okay. Okay, so that week was all about CNNs used for explanation. There was many methods like there's some early method, there were class activation maps, and there are some recent methods as well. In week seven, we saw CNN for a different task, not for image classification, but for object detection. Okay. Okay, so they said in an image, oh, it's not working. It'll work, right? It's not working. Let me refresh. An image that can be one object, there can be other objects as well. Okay, so when you are first doing image classification, so image classification only deals with the image with just one object. But when you have a different objects, there is two things. One is image so object localization or object detection, object localization, three things. Localization, segmentation, detection. So localization will look like, oh, sorry, first uh, let's say, um, yeah, segmentation, uh, localization. Localization will look like just to identify where these objects are by putting bounding box around the objects. Okay. That is localization. Object detection is in other hand, like, you know, giving all these things labels. Sun, this is car, this is rock, this is a person. Okay. Very well. Then coming to segmentation, in segmentation, it's sort of paint over like, you know, segment everything from everything else. Let's say I'm segmenting this one. So I'll just color this car. It's green. And let's just color this man as black.
and then as green. Sun as yellow. And the sky by sky. Else as sky. Let's just put everything else as sky. This is called a segmentation mask that is learned on top of the objects. So, yeah. So, we have the segmentation map now. So, this is called segmentation. So, we started with object detection. So, object detection said, like, you know, how to detect objects. Simple. The first method that was created earlier said that just do one thing. You you have some objects, right? So you have some objects. So let's let's just build two objects now. Let's get taunting. Okay, two objects. What do you want to do? You just have to parse through all the possible, you know, shapes, and so there will be some shapes within which these objects will fall, right? So you just pass everything to a CNN and let them predict what's inside with confidence, okay? So there will be a random box here. It will also be passed to CNN. And there will be a partial box here. It will also be passed to a CNN. So they will like, just pass everything to CNN and like from all the boxes. And uh, uh, so, okay, so it will, uh, so the, the boxes with highest confidence of an object will be uh, assigned that object. So this is very computationally expensive. So after that, we sort of created something called um, RCNN. So RCNN was region proposal network, um, uh, CNN. So first they will propose a reason where the object might lie, then they will pass those reasons to the, um, so instead of passing everything, every rubbish, they'll first find those portions in the image where the object might be present and then pass that, okay? In the next um, paper, that is first RCN, in the first RCN, they, instead of passing the, region to the image they found the region and they passed the image once and they sort of mapped the region in the into the past version so even if we have just right even if we have 2000 proposals we have to pass the 2000 proposal to 2000 cnns and get the corresponding picture maps but first I said indeed is that let's say you have 2000 proposals. You just pass this image to CNN and you get the image back. Small image back. And you map all those portions to corresponding portions in the image. It's already mapped. So in that way, you just have to pass through the CNN once. And all these things after this is very small. That doesn't require any computation overhead. So, this was our CNN. 
This was first RCNN. Then there was something called faster RCNN. And faster RCNN was even more faster than faster RCNN. It just uses used parallel network to achieve all these things. Okay. After that, the the OG sort of algorithm came is YOLO. So YOLO is you only look once and just by passing the image once, it can able to, it was able to um predict all these things. It was the real time object detection algorithm. And YOLO like started creating YOLO version one, version two, and so on. Currently it is YOLO version six. Okay, great. Coming to week eight. Give me a moment. Coming to week eight, we started looking at into RNNs. So what happened is that there were some other tasks that we started uh, building, such as visual question answering and image captioning. The task is that you'll be fed with an image and you will be asked a question. What is this man doing? What is he is holding? What is this made of? So it will give you answers out of it. It involves text. Next is you give an image and you have to generate what this image describes. Okay. So this is like this is like you know just something involving text stuff. And ANNs are not very good at processing the sequential data, okay? That's why they bring in RNN. RNN process sequential data. Sequential data means, so data with spatial, uh, not spatial, temporal relationship, like uh, the sequence matters. Okay? If something comes um, after or before, it will matter. So if there's a sentence, this is a good boy, processing it one after the one is meaningful. If you were given only first boy, then a, then good, then is, then this, it's not meaningful. So to process this type of data, we, why we need this type of data? Because of this task, this task. Right here, BQA or visual question answering, this is image captioning. So, to process this type of data, we use something called RNN, that is called recurrent neural network, where the input from the current layer will be passed to the next layer 
so that when I'm writing the next word given is, I also I have information of is as well as I have the information of this. So you sort of saying given this and is that is the output. This is all about how to handle sequential data, and it was um handled by LS uh, first um LS uh, RNNs and RNN was developed into so RNN went into this problem of of um banishing and exploding gradient. So to handle that, we created LSTMs and ZAGRU. In today's day scenario, we have transformer models and which which is a bidirectional LSTM and that sort of drives the innovation behind um, that's that sort of drives the uh, innovation behind chat GPT. It is week eight. Week nine was um um all about attention mechanism. So attention uh mechanism was uh, created um, so so started with like attention was like. So you are sort of looking at an image and telling that, okay, this is a image of this person or this is the image of um this object. So you're not actually looking at everything in the image. You're just looking at some portion of the image. Like if you just look at the cat's uh, fur, you can say, okay, this is the cat. You have, don't have to uh, confuse it with dog or something. So to accommodate that, uh, to accommodate this, that uh, um, thing, so people tried. Uh, people started uh, designing something called as attention mechanism, where they will learn a mask. The mask will say, the mask will be active where, in, uh, in the in the in the area where of the image where the um algorithm attend to before predicting, and the mask will be like you know very low or you can say black, where um, the in the uh, in that portion of the image where it is not important and uh, in terms of text as well when we are looking at a dialogue uh, let's say uh, uh, coming from the uh, this uh, tv so that is the big bang theory um if someone if, if the dialogue is that's my spot uh that's my spot was uh popularly known as uh, to be the dialogue of sheldon cooper uh like let's say some in game of thrones in game of thrones uh, if the dialogue is uh, Dracarys, you will know that it was said by Daenerys Targaryen. But if if there's a long sentence saying something, then at the end it's saying Dracarys. So you'll just look at this Dracarys and say, okay, this was told by uh, Daenerys Targaryen. You won't even read the entire sentence. So with that idea, they created attention mechanism. So before looking at the entire image, the algorithm should look at some portion of the image, or you can say attend to some portion of the image, uh, given attention to some portion of the image, and that was the thing like you know, uh, that was the thing that created this uh, uh, attention mechanism, and with that we sort of created this uh, visual uh, sorry a language model, visual question answering, and all these things. So when the question is like this, what is he, what is he holding? The attention should go to to his hand. Even if there are a lot of people, a lot of things going on in the background, like a human, if it is if you are asked the question, what is it in his hand? Your your vision should go towards his hand, not throughout the image. So so the algorithm was forced to look at certain portion of the image without looking at the entire image. So by reducing the computational time and as well as um, minimizing the like you know uh, prediction time as well. And that was attention mechanism week nine. In week ten, we tried GANs, and uh, GAN was uh, like so. So we started with generative model. So generative model uh, was. Uh, genetic model was uh, like uh, creating, uh, generating stuff. So it was earlier it was given y. So given what is given x, what is the y? So what, what is the probability of y given x? Okay. Now 
and they ask the question what is the probability of x and y like generating x and y together what is the probability of these two things appearing together in a joint probability and so with that idea people have created several generative uh sorry uh yeah generative models uh such as uh, gans and vaes gan is sort for a uh, generative adversarial network and VAE is sort for various auto encoders with that we sort of generated images and this field has now evolved and the recent methods for generative uh, model is the diffusion models with which we generate stuff. So this week has like all of our generative models. So you can see all this, the level of this um, lecture was increased very carefully towards the end, okay? So in week 11, it was all about uh, GAN improvements. So they sort of tried improving the GAN models and GAN models were uh, like improved and uh, they were um, so initially when GAN came, they it suffered from this problem of uh, um, um, it was not stable. It was not learning uh, clearly. So people, so people, uh, uh, people started uh, proposing different GAN architectures for different things, style uh, transfer and everything. And um, this uh, with like all the GAN improvement stuff was discussed. In the end week twelve, there were some advanced topics, and it was recently discussed in, um, in Tuesday in my lecture. So I covered uh, the self-supervised learning and the adversarial attacks, but I'll tell briefly what other things are. So few sort and zero sort learning. So few sort and zero sort learning is a type of meta learning. The goal of this type of learning is that how to learn something meaningful with very little data. Let's say like we don't have a lot of data with in, a, in, in our hand. So to introduce the scenario. So the level data is expensive. So given that the data amount is very low, it's around like, let's say 10 samples per, uh, uh, 10 samples per um, class. And uh, even if let's say one sample for class, let us go one short learning, zero short is zero sample per class. So even if one sample per class is there, how can we learn a meaningful representation out of it? That is few sort of learning. Self-supervised learning. Self-supervised learning says we have a lot of data, but we don't have a lot of data with levels. So we have a few data with levels and we have a, we have a lot of data without levels. So the idea here is that how to learn meaningful patterns from this unlabeled data. You can say, okay, so there is unsupervised learning. No. So then the idea behind self-supervised learning is that how to learn meaningful patterns from the unlevel data by creating auxiliary tasks, by creating supervised tasks, which is the creating supervised task, which is supervised in nature. Um, and this task is not the task that we're targeting, but if we learn this auxiliary task, we'll be able to create, we'll be able to get some features out of it, get some representation of the image out of it, which will help us uh, learning the final task or final goal very clearly. Then we sort of looked at adversarial robustness and adversarial robustness was all about how these models can be fooled. So uh, these models that you see in the deep neural network are um, black box models. And in 2014, uh, um, a paper came that uh, titled uh, that was titled "Intriguing Properties of uh, Deep Neural Network." So, in that, they asked, they like they sort of um, evaluated how these models can be attacked, how these models can be fooled just by adding a tiny bit of noise to it. And this noise, noise, the tiny bit of noise is so small that it is almost invisible to human. And we are called the adversarial noise and they are well-crafted noise by 
So the, the, this noise are crafted by maximizing the loss of the classifier across the correct class. Then is then comes the model pruning and compression. So while uh, deploying the models in a IoT setting, we uh, sort of want the model to be very small because the size of the devices are very small and the RAM and everything is very small. That's why we prune the model or compress the model. So there is that. Then then something called neural architecture search. So neural architecture search is like you have a neural network model, but you have a data, you have a neural network model, but you, you don't know if it is the best model or not. You want to search through all the neural network architecture that is present in this neighborhood, which will best fit on this data and give you the best results. That is called neural architecture search. And uh, yeah, so these are the things that we learned in the week 12. So with this, like all the things that we have, um, that was uh, discussed in the, on these 12 weeks, we discussed and in week 11 and 12, there are pretty advanced stuff that we discussed. So if you're not okay with that is fine, but uh, they're the recent thing that is happening. So that is the, the recent things like vision transformers, diffusion models, fusion learning, self-supervised learning. Then, um, then there is um, adversarial robustness and uh, uh, compression, fairness, bias, and all these things. So with this, we'll close this session because it was just one hour session. So uh, thanks you, thanks you, thanks everyone like who joined on this session and enjoyed this lecture series uh, across the week. So we'll close this session now and uh, uh, all the best for your exams. Bye.